Hello, this is the Shoddy Straw Man. Today I'm going to be talking about how do I make a win con. Somebody was asking about it in the Little Cup Discord, so I figured I should at least go over it in some capacity. Because it's a very vital part of how do you play Mons. What is your team plan? What are you planning on winning with? How do you make sure that your win con's actually good and that your opponent's not just got this great, fantastic team that you just can't outplay? How do you do all that stuff? Now, I'm not the biggest expert at Mons. I've been playing for like, I want to say almost six months from now. Whenever Little Cup Open was, that's when I started. But you have to fundamentally understand what are your win cons and then how can you apply that in practice. So I'm going to go to a generation which I have never played, Gen 7 Little Cup. I've never played a single game of Little Cup. And this is from Levi's Premier League, Lily AC versus Trace. And something kind of fundamental about team prep and figuring out, well, what is going to win is just looking at the team structure. So Lily here, she's got Villaby, Rufflet, Fungus, Pawniard, Staryu, and Mudbray. And then on the opposing side, it's Ghastly, Minfu, Mariani, Pawniard, Snivy, Diglett. Now, obviously, you're still going to have some sort of meta knowledge. For example, like, oh, well, is, is that Scarf Snivy, so that way you can do contrary Leaf Storms and just, just start blowing through things? Is it Scarf Pawniard, because that's what you want to have instead, and then this is more of a utility mon for Snivy? I mean, that stuff is still very important. But I think fundamentally, just looking at, okay, so let's look at this from Lily's perspective. What is going to win her the game in this matchup? And the answer is, is that probably Rufflet and Vullaby combined, and that's because you're playing Bird Spam. You have two flying types, and the idea is whatever your opponent has as a flying type check, you just overwhelm it, beat it down with your Vullaby and your Rufflet, and then just go to town. And what's really fortunate for Lily is that there's only one flying resist on the opponent's team, and there are two flying weak mons, being Minfu and Snivy. Ghastly's not known for being very defensive ever because it's got base 30 defenses and most of the time you want to pump into speed and all that sorts of stuff. It can be dangerous because it's got Thunderbolt, which you always have to keep in mind, but it's not going to want to switch into either of Vullaby or Rufflet's attacks. And the only flying resist is Pawniard. I'm not sure if Vullaby gets Heatwave in this generation. But Ruffle can still run fighting coverage and superpower in order to be able to hit this. And even then, if this if Pawniard is gone, and then you can get going with Hustle Rufflet, start doing Aerial Ace, Brave Bird, and then also U turn if it wants to, to get more momentum. You also have to be wary of Marini, because Marini is very, very bulky. It's got some pretty good stats. It's got Regenerator, and then it's also got Recover. So that's going to be kind of important for you to watch out for. But the fundamental thing that you have to know is that, okay, so I have two flying types, the opponent has one flying resist, I'm going to want to sweep with either Vullaby or Rufflet. Likely Rufflet, because it can break through Pawniard. You can still do stuff with Vullaby, because it's, it's got knockoff plus Brave Bird. And I know that much just by watching the replay, but you still have a lot of, a lot of thought process to go in, even though I don't even know this tier. I can quickly say, oh, well, this doesn't have anything that it really needs to in order to be able to defend against Bird Spam. Bird Spam is really good against this team because there's no flankers besides Pawniard, and then you also still have options for Pawniard, which is A, either your own Pawniard because it can run Brick Break, you can spore it with Fungus, and Snipey doesn't want to come in because Fungus is Grass Poison, it can take a lot of damage. You also have Mud Bray, so that way it can switch in and then threaten with a very hard Earthquake. And then Staryu, uh, it's neutral, but It'll still be pretty good there. Staryu's also looking pretty good, because it outspeeds everything barring Diglett. And Diglett could be Z-Move, because this is Gen 7, and I think that they like to run that a bit. But, like, you have options here. So, I think that your first two win cons are Rufflet and Vullaby. Get them in often, because it's really easy to start blowing up things that Trace has. Because um, it forces a lot of Pawniard switches. And then also you can get Sulthrex up with either Mudbray or Pawniard, and that'll keep on racking up the chip damage. There's also no removal on that side, 
So that means, well actually, Snivy can get Defog and you can run that if you want. If it's not Scarf, but... Actually, we'll probably be a little bit better in this matchup. But also, you have either... Def I think you want to run, like, Defog Vullaby to get rocks off. You can run Rapid Spin on Staryu to keep rocks off. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this Pawniard in order for it to do what it's supposed to do in this matchup so that way Trace doesn't lose. But then, alright, let's... Well, now that we have all that, we understand two key things. First... You're gonna what you're gonna win with, and then secondly, what your opponent is stopping you from sweeping, which is the Pawniard. You do also have to be worried about Marine A because of how bulky it is. But you can deal with that with Mudbray or Staryu. And like even you still have to integrate that into your plan. How do you get it so that way this Marion A is up against either your Mudbray or your Staryu? And where do you go from there? It's, it's there's a lot of sequencing that you have to do when it when understanding bonds. And then from Trace's point of view, for switch sides, uh, Gasp is looking pretty alright, and then you can also trap the Pawniard on the opposing side if you really want to. And then Vullaby typically doesn't run... No, you don't run Twistcraft Vullaby a lot of the time, you much prefer that Rufflet has that role, because you can do Hustle instead. So that's going to be a little bit sketch. You have to be really careful with Minfu. Because what makes Vullaby so scary, even without a Choice Scarf, is that it gets the ability Weak Armor, and that'll boost its speed whenever it's hit by a physical attack. And Moonfu, at least from Gen 8, really often likes running Fake Out. And you also have to be really wary of if you do any stray U-turns as well, because then Vullaby can come in, take a kind of soft hit, get a speed boost, and then you're on the back foot already. Because then it'll speed your entire team, regardless of any of them have a Choice Scarf or not. Marion is pretty alright, but as I said a little bit earlier, you have to be careful with the Mudbray and the Staryu. Figure out, how do I make it so that way these two can't come in on me and try to blow through this Marion That'd be really bad. Pawniard is going to be exceedingly, exceedingly powerful in this matchup because of how well it checks Willoughby and Ruffle it. It can also get rocks up, and then it can punish a defog attempt because it's, it typically runs Defiant. And that's always really good. And you really, yeah, I think that your game plan is definitely to get rocks up because then it'll force your opponent into some really bad scenarios. Because let's say that the Rapid Spin star you, Rapid Spin doesn't give a speed boost yet. And you can probably go to Diglett, Z move into that, remove it, and then that means that one of the two removal options is going to be significantly worse for Lily. And then also, it's some pretty alright positioning. Now, obviously, it'll invite in Rufflet, and that's a bit rough, but then you also have Mary Nee in the back that can probably take a hit or two. There's a lot that you have to consider, and I'm not even prepared for this myself. Like, it could be that Traces has like a Scarf Snivy, and then you have to try and figure out, well, how do I get this on the field and get it to sweep, especially because there's a Fungus in the way. What happens if you're running with Scarf Pawniard and because it's not running Rocks, and Rocks is instead on Diglett? Good question. All of that's just supposed to come with experience. You just have to keep on playing the meta, understanding, well, what are the popular sets? What do people like running? And what can I do? You know? It's, this is not a very day one skill of, oh, well, I just boot up Mons, look at these teams, and understand exactly what's going on. Heck, that could even be a Choice Scarf Mudbray if it really wanted to be, I guess. I don't know the better. It, it could be entirely. So you really have to play out, play to your win cons, and try and figure out what your opponent's running based on their team structure. So that's from a different gen, but then to a gen that I played quite a bit. This is me in Little Cup Premier League. This was my third game, but I think that it still encapsulates my point really appropriately. I managed to win this one, which was kind of clutch, but it was still kind of hard. And that's solely because of the team matchup. I'm running Porygon Carvana. I would not, if you ever go back, to Gen 8, do not run Porygon Carvana unless your Porygon is defensive. This is not a defensive Porygon, and that causes a lot of issues. But also, because it's a Scarf Porygon, it's my win condition. And there's a few reasons for that. First and foremost, it's Scarf. And because it's Scarf and I'm looking at the opponent's team structure, it's highly likely that they're not running a Scarf for themselves. And the reason for that is because both Staryu and Abra have really good natural speed, and then also you have Trap Inch on there, which has first impression. So there's a good amount of speed control there already. 
so it doesn't really matter. Like, having a scar for an addition to all of this isn't terribly useful. So, Pori Gun's most likely my win condition. It also has Bolt Beam combo, so that means I have Ice Beam and Thunderbolt. So, I can hit everything barring Pawniard. I can also hit Fu with Psychic, but I can hit everything except for Pawniard really well with Bolt Beam. Because there's two Ice Weeks, you have an Electric Week, and then everything else is hit neutrally by it. My main concern that I'm worried about is Trap Inch. And the reason for that is if I lock into Thunderbolt and I kill something, then Trap Inch comes in and then just eats me for breakfast because I can't switch out because of a rated trap. It's going to be exceedingly valuable throughout the entirety of this game if I play my cards right. Next we have Carvana. It's probably not going to be doing too much, and that's kind of unfortunate. And the reason being that Carvana really likes not seeing Morlul. Morlul is Grass Fairy. And that means that its stab combination of Water Dark is really bad into it, and it doesn't, it does not run Poison Fangs, and I'm not running Poison Fangs here, so that's going to be really hard to break over if I'm not if I'm using Carvana. So that means that I can probably use this as like a, a mid game attacker, see when I can get it in to get some more chip on the opposing team, see what I can do there. But also another problem is that Pawniard's also there, and I mean I can kind of deal with this because I have Carvana and Porygon, so that means I can put a lot of pressure on this. And that's good, but I'm not gonna find a whole bunch of opportunities to get this in. And also there's Staryu in the back, and Staryus are typically really bulky, and you can't KO these without getting a knockoff, which I can get with Pharisee, kind of. I'll get to why Pharisee is actually perhaps my most important mod on this entire team. But Staryu is kind of hard to break, I don't have natural speedy mons, so Abra is going to be really, really concerning. Now, obviously, I still have Porygon, but it can set up a substitute on a switch out or something like that, and it can have coverage moves like Fire Punch, and that'll be bad for Seracede. Like these two are already really good speed control, and I'm running not very fast mons on, on baseline, so it's a bit concerning. Next up, I have Fu. Fu is going to be pretty good for dealing with Staryu because it's always naturally bulky. It'll be good at dealing with other Fu, uh, Ponyard. That's probably gonna be my best switch into it. But then it also really hates seeing Morlul because say if it's the Grass Fairy typing and then they also run Effect Spore. So that means that I have to be really careful whenever I attack into that Morlul. It could mean that I get paralyzed or slept and both of those are awful status conditions and I have no real way to stop them. The good news is that I have Pharisee, and Pharisee is really good at dealing with Morlul because it resists both of its stabs and it can't be put to sleep by Spore. It's going to resist Abra's Psychic, and if it's not running Fire Punch, I can wall it really effectively. It loves switching into Staryu a lot of the time because it resists attacks exceedingly well and it can hit back with a really strong Giga Drain and get a whole bunch of HP back. So that's always really nice. And obviously, I still have to be worried about Fu and Pawniard, and then especially Trap Inch, because Trap Inch runs Super Power, and that can break through my Pharisee. But its matchup against Staryu, Abra, and Morlul is really, really good. Coughing is in a bit of a rough spot, and the reason for that is that although it's a really good food check, and it'll absolutely decimate the opposing Morlul, when am I going to get it in there? And it's going to be a lot of free turns for Abra if I don't get rid of Abra really, really quickly and that could be a really big issue. It's still going to be alright because uh, I can take physical attacks from Fu, Pawniard, and Morlul really well, but it's going to be a really rough time. And then also I have Trap Inch, that's the final member of Pori Pinch Core. And that one's going to be pretty good because that means that if Rissi ever takes a KO with a really weakened Mon, if they take a KO with Abra and they're not running Protect on it, I can just immediately decimate it because it's get first impression and it's wrong, it's gone. So I have options there. It can also take out Pawniard because it's running Superpower, so I can do that, get really, really freed up. It'll just depend on how I want to run it. But then also the problem is, is that Moralul really hard walls this, and then it's also got Synthesis, and it might still be 8. Yeah, it's, it's still 8 PPP. But 
Like, this more lull is gonna be really, really hard to break for the entirety of my team. And barring barring using Porygon to break over this with an Ice Beam, it's just gonna be such a stone wall. Because everything that would normally well, everything on my team really doesn't want to see this. It's a really bad matchup. But I still have to play until my outs. I have to play to get Porygon. And then I... You know what? I, let's go into this game a little bit and discuss how this positioning really affects me. Because I have the first few turns. I remember that. And I did not play them fantastically, but I think I played them pretty alright. So what do I want to lead in? This is a good question. And I think that I lead Foo because if I manage to knock off the opposing Foo then that's really, really good for me, and that's something I really want to have happen. Because then Carvana can deal a lot more damage to it, Porygon can probably Oko it if it's given enough of an opportunity, and it makes it a lot worse at switching and taking these attacks. Uh, I believe I Foo lead? Oh, I Coughing lead, okay. So I Coughing lead expecting them to go Foo, because I actually want the Eviolite on my main Foo, so that way I can deal with Staryu, possibly Trap Inch, probably Ponyard, like, uh, deal with those attacks significantly better because it's such a blanket check to a lot of things in the metagame. And the main issue here is that this is a pretty awful matchup. Coughing's a poison type, Abra's a psychic type, and Abra's faster than Coughing, and I can't do too much here. But then the question is, well, what do I want to switch to? And that's the big thing. Do I want to switch into Carvana, and then I'll have a lot of offensive pressure because then the opponent doesn't get a one-up on me? Do I want to go Pharisee and then possibly take a Fire Punch? Do I want to go into Trap Inch? And the answer I ultimately go out, go with is Pharisee. And that's because I have to understand, well, this Abra is really, really threatening to my team because I don't have anything to immediately threaten it. And I doubt that Rissy's going to take such an early risk at losing Abra because of how good it is. And, you know, let me go for Substitute and that's fine because then Pharisee can at least take one Fire Punch. It's kind of dumb how bulky it is. But I don't think that Rissy's gonna be very aggressive here. I think he's just gonna go very straightforward, very simple, and see what's going on. And I have to play really defensively in order to deal with that. So, first turn, I switch up, go to Pharisee, and then they still can get to me. And now is where I'm still in a bit of a tight spot because we'll is this running Fire Punch? And if it is, can it not kill me from here? So what do I do in response? Well, you never want a Psychic into a Pharisee because if you predict wrong, your Abra's dead because these run knockoff. So I could, I could probably, like if I wanted to, I could go food to possibly take a Fire Punch and then see what like, you know, maybe fake out into it, get some chip. Because uh, you psychic and hold on. you might oh my special defense falls. That doesn't matter too too much because it just means like they can use shadow ball. But I also realized that well they're not taking any damage from their attacks, which means that they're not inner focus. So if I wanted to, I could go to Minfu, fake out, deal some damage. Oh, and also because the damage roll, the damage roll is life orb only. But I I figure that because if it, what I can do is that I can go into Trap Inch, and the reason for that is I really need this Abra gone, but also it'll test for Fire Punch. If they Fire Punch into my Trap Inch, Trap Inch takes very little damage, and then I can hit back with a really strong first impression, and if they're running Fire Punch, then they don't have Shed Shell or anything like that, because you need the Life Orb boost in order to KO Pharisee. So that's what I go to. If they go to Fu on a really good double, Actually, I'm not sure what their entire strategy was. Maybe to threaten out Pharisee in case it knocked or something, and you're kind of fine with losing the Eviolite and Mean food to threaten out Pharisee, and then you can U-turn into coughing afterwards. But I was testing for Fire Punch, and then I went Trap Inch, and then Mean food comes out, and then I go back to coughing because it's, the cough, it's your Mean food counter, and then you go back into Abra. Now I should probably go to turn four. Okay, so this is perhaps where knowing where your like what your win cons are is exceedingly vital. And the reason for that is, oh well, Abra just came back in. Why not just go into Pharisee again? I mean, if if they wanted to, they could just fire punch me on the last turn. It would have been fine. But the reason why I don't is because my Pharisee still has to check off, like a few other things in the back. It has to check Staryu and Moralol. 
in addition to this Abra. So if I predict wrong and Abra comes in with a Fire Punch and just knocks me out, I'm donezo. I'm basically out of this game already because I don't have enough tools to deal with Staryu and Morlil in addition to this Abra. And this Abra's already really, really strong. So what can I do? And they're probably gonna, they can probably play a little bit more aggressive because they were expecting me, oh, well, they're gonna go Pharisee on this again because it's healthy enough and then it can Giga Drain up or set some hazards or something. It has options. And also, you don't really care about coughing all that much. It's not really a big factor in your game plan. Star, you can do a lot to it. It's probably gonna get knocked by Mean Fu some down, some way down the line. And if you just claim it right here, it's fine. And then even if you lose your Abra, you still have Staryu and Trap Inch in the back. So if my Pharisee comes in and I'm not paying attention, it can just get removed. So you're going to play kind of aggressive here because you felt out the game a little bit. Understood, well, he's going to play, like he's going to go Pharisee and it'll be fine. But then instead, I go Trap Inch. And the reason why is that, it, as I said before, it takes the Fire Punch really, really well, if that's what's coming in and it preserves my Pharisee in order to check Staryu and Morlo in the back. And I get a Drain Punch instead. And that's still telling me, hey, this is Life Orb, because if you're running Protect, you would always want to run Counter. So that means that I'm free to just first impression KO the Abra. And now my positioning is pretty fantastic, despite the fact that I just spent four turns on the back foot just switching around. This is also a really good reason why you should try switching and not just muscling through some matchups. But you have to understand everything that's going on. Like, what are they trying to go for? What are you trying to go for? What's standing in your, what's standing in their way? What's standing in your way? Those are the four things that you have to know. What's my win con? What's my opponent's win con? What are my roadblocks to my opponent's win con? And second, and finally, excuse me, what are, like, what are the roadblocks to my win con? Get all of those four things, if you want, if you need to, write them down. I knew that I, when I first did Little Cup Majors, it was a really big tournament, and I was up against Lily, who's really, really strong. I know that what I did was that I literally went out, I had a pad of paper, wrote down, checks, counters, what's my win con, all that sort of stuff, so that way I'd always keep it in the forefront of my mind, and be like, what do I need to get rid of? It's really important stuff. And then you can do that with a lot more than just this tier. You can do it with a different tier. You can do it with OU sometimes, just by looking at the team matchup. Uh, but then, let's go for like a little bit more simpler of an example, because this was really complicated. Because like, oh, we got Porygon and Carvana, it's a lot less simple. It's like, okay, well, here's a significantly simpler example. Me versus Colette, Levi's Premier League. I almost won this one, I was really proud of this match. But on baseline, it's just like, okay, so I got Fu, Coughing, Pharisee, Natsu, Drillber, Frillish. This is a Scarf Frillish, so it's offensively oriented. And then look at my opponent's team. No water resists. Now, obviously, you still have to be wary of Porygon, but no water resists? That's going to be my win con for sure. Now, I still have to worry about Magnemite being really fast because it's got a choice Scarf, and that's still going to be annoying. But I can already tell at the bet. well, no water resists. This is Water Spout. It's going to be really, really dangerous. I can deal with the opponent's team exceedingly well just with this, because they have to pay. They have to play really, really hard in order to not get destroyed by this village. Really good matchup, and that's how, that's sometimes all that it takes. That's all you need to know. I'm like, oh, but what's there? Wincon? Oh, it's probably gonna be a uh, Abra, probably. Also, Choice Scarf, Magnemite, because it's really fast. Because you can get 22 speed, and this is 21 speed, and that creates a little bit of a hard time. But like sometimes it just it's just really simple. Like, Water, water type user, no water resist, bing bing bong. Especially with Onyx and Larvesta, that's going to be really hard to defeat. And also, probably another thing that you have to watch out for that's, you really get really get it when you get a lot of game knowledge, is just, I need to set up rocks here. And you're thinking, oh, obviously, because Larvesta's there and you quadruple, you deal 50% of its health every time that it switches in, so of course you want rocks. But that's really like a non-factor, it's whatever, like, cool, it's a bonus. But the main problem is defensive Porygon. And the reason why that's such an issue is that if you look at Calcs, because Calcs are your best friend, please, for the love of God, look at your Calcs. So if you go to Frillish, Choice Scarf, and then you have Porygon defensive, you look at Water Spout, 
It has a 9% chance to two-hit KO, but then if you set up Stealth Rocks on their field, 93.8% chance. That's why I want the rocks, and I already have an uncontested setter in Drillbird, so gotta set up my rocks and then prevent rocks from getting set up on my side. And the reason for that is that Water Spout's dependent on your HP. So, I already have like a really good read of where this battle is gonna go, and it doesn't take a lot of effort. Sometimes that's just what happens. Sometimes you get a lot more high effort ones like this one, where it's just like, oh, well, I have to be really careful of not only the Staryu and the Abra and the Moral, but I also have to be careful of the Trap Inch, and there's a whole bunch of threats on the opponent's team. And this was not a fantastic matchup, and this is significantly better, but you still have to understand the fundamentals of the game. How do I get through this? How... What is my win column with stopping me from sweeping? It's the Porygon. Well, how do I make it so that the Porygon does not prevent my sweep? Well, I get rocks up, and then every single time that it comes in, I have a full power water spout. It can't take two of them at a time, so that means that if you want to be able to stop this, then you have to switch out, lose them on, because all of these guys are really fragile on the special side, except for maybe Abra. But I can force a lot of KOs, get a lot of progress just by doing that. Now, obviously, I am still very, very, very inexperienced with the game. And somebody with, like, years of experience would be like, Oh, well, actually, you just, like, X, Y, and Z that you gotta do, and all this other sorts of stuff. But, like, just, you gotta go out there and learn. You gotta go out there and think critically about all this sorts of stuff in order to get better at it. You know? This is not... I don't think anybody should be shamed for not knowing all of this, because it takes a while to understand. But... You just gotta be patient with yourself first and foremost, I think. Is that, like, this took me a while to get. Now, obviously, it's all along the six months, that's not bad. But it's like, yeah, but I was grinding the ladder, like, day after day after day, trying to get better at this, trying to become better at Mons, just because I found it fun. But don't beat yourself up if you can't just grasp this concept immediately. You know? You gotta take a lot of time and effort to learn a tier so that we can understand. Oh, well, you know, like the Porygon Frillich interaction, well, that takes the hits actually really well, so I would need to set up my rocks, you know? You gotta be patient with yourself in learning all of this sorts of stuff. And I'm hoping that at least by saying, oh, well, here's how you do it, you keep on going forward. Sometimes, you know, there's a ladder game and it's just completely unwinnable because your opponent's playing rain and you have no water resist. Or they're playing sun and you have no fire resist, you know? Sometimes that'll just happen, but if you keep on getting better at the game, playing more games, and trying to understand it in a more critical way like this, you're going to get more wins eventually, you know? You just got to keep at it. And you know what? I, I hope that I have at least helped, un helped you understand what's going on here. Thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you.